that almost more than you'll do? Huh? Is that almost more than you'll do next Saturday? Uh, oh, scheme-wise? Yeah, we won't show it much. Too many eyes on Yeah, now it's like putting on a contract and stuff. Just got you actually took the yellow jerseys off a couple quarterbacks yeah. today. I mean, those guys haven't taken a college hit yet. No, you know, they've, um, you think about those guys, they played so much football throughout high school, and then they get here and they're on kind of scout team, and they're, you know, they, you, can, you can get into a comfort zone, a false sense of reality of what the game is actually like. And they're both really athletic, gifted guys. They're both big guys. And I wanted to give them a chance to, to run with the football to show what they could do. We saw a little bit from Siler. Unfortunately, we couldn't get as many opportunities for Jeff to run the ball. But I thought just in general, it was good to get them to understand the actual true speed of the game and, and the decision making, how quick it has to come. So uh, I thought it was I thought that aspect of it was good. It was good for a defense to actually have to tackle the quarterbacks uh, and make those plays. What do you tell the defense about hitting the quarterback? Well, when they're in their purple jer purple jerseys, they're they're we're live, you know, and, and they understood it. And there was part of them were cheering, and part of them was like, "Oh man, now we got to tackle these big guys," you know. And uh, but uh, they did a good job. What's going on with Bishop? Uh, he's just sore. Maybe they asked that. What, what do you see out of the, the, the backup quarterbacks right now? Well, I, I think that, um, you know, like, like I was saying earlier, you know, we put them in their purple jerseys there for the last session to, to be live to really assess some game-like, you know, speed and, and their decision-making. Um, I think that uh, I think that Siler has shown a great deal of consistency now for a week or two now. It's unfortunate he threw the one interception there late. Marcus made a nice play on the ball. Um, but I liked seeing him running the ball a little bit, sticking his nose in there, got his lip bloodied up, had to keep fighting and competing, and, and finished off there at the end with the touchdown pass to Kendall. So um, um, w with Jeff and Troy, they're both physically gifted guys and in their own ways. You know, Jeff is a big guy, really powerful arm. Troy, a little bit more quicker, elusive, very quick release. It's just getting them comfortable. Um, they're, they're not, I, you know, in their play, it doesn't exhibit quite yet a consistency factor from a comfort level within the scheme. So we got to keep pushing them and keep putting them out there. But that's part of being a young quarterback. And some guys learn it a little quicker than others. Um, what I appreciated about all those guys is every day they come to work and their willingness to work with, with Marcus um, to study and to prepare um, and try and really hard. And, and I, I appreciate that about them. Fair to say that Siler's the two guy right now. I don't have to make that decision right now. That's the beauty of it. See, we haven't had a chance to talk to you since yeah. the statement about Austin came out. I mean, how, how frustrating is it that that's still kind of dragging on? Well, we knew this would be the process with him. Um, that's why we, you know, we we tried to stay ahead of it from the very beginning. Um, I think to uh, to Austin's credit, um, so far he's continually doing the things that we've asked him to do, um, so that it. it when we deem the appropriate time, he can earn himself back in our roster. But, uh, you know, he's a good kid. He made a, he made a bad decision. He made a mistake. And uh, uh, he's uh, he's learned from it. He's obviously going to have to pay the price from it. Uh, hopefully, the rest of our organization uh, can learn from that mistake, and as well as others in the, that make that mistake, and, and we can move forward. But, uh, you know, I'm always one that's going to look for the positive in things, and I think uh, Austin will be better for it. I think our team will be better for it off the field. I think we'll be better for it on the field. We're getting some valuable experience out of Michael Harvickson, Evan Hudson, and Josh Perkins right now. Uh, and when we get Austin back on board, when he earns himself uh, back onto this football team, he'll be hungry and ready to go. Steve, when you think about what the punishment is for something like that, how much are you concerned about not just Austin, but also the message it sends to these guys at the same time? Well, I think every situation is different. You know, I'm, I have 105 sons on this team. and. Um, you know, I know them. I know them on a on a very close and intimate level from that aspect of I see them every day. They're in my office every day, and uh, I know I know of other mistakes that our guys make that you guys don't know about. Um, and so, uh, I know what uh, I know what the type of individual Austin is. I know what he means to our community. I know the great work he does in our community. I know the type of student he is. Um, and so I, I don't think that this mistake by Austin is truly indicative of his character and his behavior, but he made a mistake. So different messages get sent in different ways. Uh, if it were other individuals on our team, the punishment could be harsher. Um, 
So we'll figure it out. We'll get to a decision that, that we feel good about, that we think is fair to Austin, um, that's fair to our team, and, and fair to the University of Washington, and we'll move on. You talked about Deontay Campbell the other day, kind of touched down over there. What has he done this spring to maybe elevate himself? Thus far? He's playing really consistent football. And I think he's a great example for our team. Um, that when you just keep doing things right, especially in this style of play, when you're playing this up-tempo of an offense, the ability to, to focus on your job and your task for that next snap, regardless of how tired you may be, that's something that DeAndre's done a really good job of. He lines up, he does his job, and when the ball gets thrown to him, he makes his plays. When we ask for him to block, he blocks really well. And the result of it is, is every every time we turn on the film after practice, you notice number 19 with some big catches, some touchdowns, some key blocks to spring long runs, and that's why he's he is has the role that he has on our roster right now is his consistency to do things right. You obviously have a lot of receivers coming in in the fall. Yeah. I mean, a guy like him may be important in the spring to do that a little bit. To, I mean, he's going to get a lot more competitive in the fall. I think it will get competitive, um, but, but we saw this last year out of DeAndre. He, he's not going to be very too concerned about who shows up and how many stars they were ranked and all that stuff coming out. He's going to prepare himself. He's going to work hard, and it's going to take a lot for somebody to come in and beat him out. Thought at all about the format for the, the game next week? I'm going to do that over tomorrow and then into Monday. Um, it's a tricky one, you know. When, when you play at this pace, to, to you know, when you're trying to sub, it's hard to sub and have teams. And so I, I want to make it a really good format um, for fans so it's entertaining um, because I think we have an exciting football team and a good football team. So I want to give them the opportunity to see that. Uh, I'm also cognizant of the fact that it's open to the public and that it's on national television, on Pac-12 network. And so, um, you know, how much we do schematically, we have to figure out. Um, and then, and then, you know, how much we expose some of our players to live contact in a full football game. You know, we didn't see obviously any of Bishop today. We knew it was going to be a live day. And um, so, we'll, we'll figure all that out. But again, I hope it's a great atmosphere at Memorial next Saturday, um, and, and we can put on a good show for our fans. Is, it, is Connor pretty, having a pretty good spring? I think he's having a great spring. We've moved him positions a little bit. We moved him kind of from a stand-up rush end to more of a uh, defensive tackle, def hard, you know, hard-nosed defensive end type player. Um, he, he's he's done a nice job in the weight room this offseason. He's put on more weight, um, and he's using. He's a tall, long guy, and that's what we're looking for. He's using his levers really well. He's striking offensive linemen. He's making plays for us. And, um, that's the, uh, I think, when you look at all this, you see the value of redshirting a young man, having a, you know, then he's a redshirt freshman. Now all of a sudden he's going into his redshirt sophomore year and he's starting to show and starting to be a player for us. So I think he's a good example. Sometimes we look at our true freshman, we say, oh, he isn't what he was cracked up to be. Well, sometimes it takes guys a little longer to develop. And when they do, they can still end up having a really good career for two, three years down the road. And I think we're going to see that out of Connor. You know, he, he and Kaysen came in together. And Kaysen's the, you know, playing as a true freshman, start making all those plays. Connor's redshirt. And well, now Connor's role on this team is, is of, of a real high importance to us of what we're doing defensively. And uh, I'm happy for him.